Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Thanks for joining me for another Art Journal cover project. This is the back side of my journal. No sniggering, please. If you missed the front of the journal, then it was only a couple of videos ago, so you can nip back in my playlist and have a look at that if you want to. But if you missed it because you haven't subscribed, then you can do so by clicking the button that you can see on screen right now. So, on with the back cover. As you can see, I've already taken the cover from the journal itself. I've removed it from its spiral bound and I'm just covering the entire of the back cover with a coat of the indigo blue black gesso. So I'm going to speed through that and I will play some music and let you watch paint dry for a little while. So while that gesso has had a little time to dry with the heat setting, I've also had a little bit of a tidy up and I've gone ahead already and pulled out, like I did previously, all my bits and pieces of paper and things, bits of ephemera that I want to stick on the front of this journal and I've already began to tear some of them out. Now all I'm using to stick down is just some matte medium. This is the indigo blue. Slap it on, but you can use any matte medium or glue that you want to. So all I'm going to do now is just to quickly um, stick down a selection of backing papers and bits of ephemera across the entire of the cover of my journal. And as before, I'm going to speed up. I'm already twice um, normal speed, so I'm going to speed up a little bit faster and play some music so you can watch the actual journal coming together.
So as you can see, I'm just having a bit of a tidy up and a clear up, and I'm happy with the positioning of all of my bits of collage onto the back cover. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a heat blast. Uh, make sure that it's all nice and dry because you don't want to be adding on any further elements or colors until it is really, really dry. So either heat set or leave it for a couple of hours so you know that it's gonna be completely um, solid, completely dry before you add anything else to it. So I'm really happy now that my cover is totally dry enough for me to work on. So I'm taking out some stencils from my collection. The one on the right there is the Indigo Blue Textures stencil which is available from my web shop. And the one on the left is the TCW stencil called Tiny Dots and this one is one I've had for a long long time. So I'm going to be using the Winsor & Newton heavy moldable, not moldable, the heavy carvable moulding paste and I'm just going to put that through the stencil with a spatula just in random positions around the cover. So all I'm going to do now is just give that moulding paste um, a bit of a heat blast with the heat tool just to make sure that it is dry before I add any other texture to it because the last thing that we want to do is to put another stencil over the top and find that it's smudged it all. So make sure that it is nice and dry. Now the beauty about the carvable moulding paste is that when you heat it, when you use a stencil such as this one where it's got small holes in, if you have flattened some of them it doesn't really matter because the moulding paste will bubble up and reinvigorate that texture if you like. So now I'm using the Indigo Blue Texture stencil and again using the same modelling paste or moulding paste I'm just going to apply that through the square section of the stencil just making sure that I get the positioning right. And I'm just going to randomly put that around the cover. So there is my stenciling and there's a few spots that I'm not happy with so I'm just going to remove those with a baby wipe before they dry. So literally if you're not happy with something you can just lift it off with a baby wipe or a piece of tissue and then you can heat set it once you're happy and waste not want not I'm just popping the, re the remaining stuff back into the tub. So once again out comes the heat gun and I'm just going to give everything a really good blast to make sure that everything is perfectly dry and I can't stress this enough, you do need to make sure that you have everything dry before you move on to your next layer. So either heat set it or leave it to dry for a couple of hours or even overnight if you've got the time. So after a quick tidy up I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and I'm just going to trim off some of the excess bits of the collage that are hanging over the edges of the, um, of the cover. Now you can use scissors or you can use a knife, it's entirely up to you. I decided to use a knife but my knife wasn't particularly sharp so it did pull some of the, the paper um, from that boot that you can see there but that doesn't really make much difference, it just adds to the um, the collage defect if you like. It's all uneven, it's all torn anyway, so you don't have to be 100% perfect unless you're um, completely OCD. Okay, so the next step is to add some more stenciling. So this time I'm going to use the Dina Wakely stencil called Affirmations and I'm just going to apply some white paint through this stencil with a stencil brush. I'm using 
Dilutions white paint. I think this is probably one of the only times that I've used the Dilutions paint for stenciling. Um, so this is brand new for me and I really was doing this as a test to see how it would hold up or whether it was too fluid. Um, it works okay. Um, there is a little bit of movement to it, but not a lot, but enough um, stability in the paint for you to be able to stencil quite easily with it. And I'm sure the more heavy body paint that you use, the easier it is to stencil. But because of the, the nature of the art journaling that we do, the paints that we tend to use are kind of medium. The Tim Holtz Distress paints are kind of fluid. The Dilutions paints are fairly fluid. The Indigo Blue ones are fairly fluid. The only ones really that have a heavy body to them are the Dina Wakey paints. But for art journaling, we don't really need a heavy body paint. So the Dilutions, the Tim Holtz, the Indigo Blue ones are perfect. So as you can see, I've added the stenciling in horizontals as well as verticals. Now, obviously I've avoided diagonals because we just don't do diagonals when we're doing mixed media art journaling. It's just one of those things. Okay, so now I've put the front cover next to the back cover and as you can see on the front on the left, it does have some green color in it. And I wanted to carry that color over into the back as well but I didn't put any uh, underpapers with green in so I'm actually going to use some paint on the back cover just to balance those colours out. Now the paint that I'm using here is the Indigo Blue English Cottage Artist Acrylic Paints and this is the Metallic Emerald City. So all I've done is mix that paint with a little bit of water into a spritz bottle and I've just splashed some dribbles and some splatters of that green paint onto the back page and you will see me add some more in a second because I wasn't happy with the, the mount that was there so I did put some more on. So now it's the turn of the inside cover and as you can see I've added the gesso around the outside um, just as a border and then I'm just going to cut a sheet of um, 12 by 12 plain sort of grey textured paper down to the size to actually glue down on the inside cover to cover up that pink colour that I don't really want. Um, so it's a very simple thing to do, you just measure it out and then all I'm going to do is just to apply some glue onto the back making sure that I've missed or not covering up those holes where the wire holds the, the cover on. Now if you had have done or if I, if I had have done it wouldn't have made any difference. I do have a proper dowel where I could have just punched the holes back out again but it just looks a little bit neater. Now all I'm doing is just adding on some tacky glue, some white craft glue, just standard PVA and then I'm just going to stick that down and smooth it out just to make that look a little bit tidier and then we're just about finished. So now we're complete, the only thing that remains to be done is to reunite the back cover onto the journal itself. So all I'm going to do is just tease those wires open and then just slot the cover back onto them and then we're ready for use. Okay, so now it's back on. All I have to do is just tighten up the wires to make sure that it doesn't fall off, which is not what we want. And then this project is complete. We have the front and the back. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again real soon.